So I'm, I'm going to use some brass plate, and this is essentially a wear plate on the on the carriage that slides up and down, which is the bottom jaw. Uh, there'll be a sandwich uh, with this brass in between either side of the plate. So the idea, I mean, ideally you'd use bronze, um, but I've got some brass in the workshop, and it's just, you can use it. It's just a little bit softer than bronze, uh, so we'll in theory wear out quicker. It will take ages to wear out. Um, so the idea, this wears out, not the steel carriage. So this can be replaced over time. Whereas if steel wore out, you'd be replacing the whole plate, which you don't want to do. So the main sliding carriage, uh, you've got your steel plate that the jaw, the bottom jaw is going to be welded to. You've got layer brass. You've then got the steel. And then you've got the, the brass that's sort of going to hook around the back. And the steel. Same again on that side. So you've got a, a sandwich with brass as the as the wear plate so that's going to rub against the plate and then uh, this is going to get clamped around and we'll get the fit just nice and then uh, I'm going to drill three half inch holes which will have high dental bolts uh, just to clamp the thing together so first thing I did I I've just welded a tempy piece of angle on the back of the frame just so the thing stands up. It's a little bit easier to work on while I'm doing this. Uh, I've clamped to get the pieces around, making sure that especially these centre pieces are nice and snug in against the side of this. Um, if anything, I want them really tight because if they're too tight, it's easy just to take a little bit off just to get a nice slack fit. Um, so I've drilled that side, I've taken this clamp off, uh, bolted that up. I've only had 10 mil bolts, but um, I can always replace them later with, with half inch. Um, and now I'll drill this side, get that bolted together, and then we can start to just uh, get things freed up. Because these will, I will be putting a grease nipple in, into the edge of that center piece on each side, and probably one in the center as well, uh, just so I can grease it keep it moving nice and free. So, so one thing I'm, I plan to do with this as well, because I've actually made these jaws, they're like eight inches by four inches, which is way bigger than the tools I'm gonna to use for forging. Um, but it gives me this bigger sort of platen area um, because in the past I've, I've, I've done some leather work, which I don't know whether you'll get that focus that, but these are embossed. Um, so the, the actual logo is embossed in and the, the stitching lines are all embossed in. Um, the way I do that is a, a machine, a, a tool, a die I suppose, and then in a press like this I can then emboss the logo, the stitch lines, the whole thing. I can also do wet forming, um, so this is for a, like a Leatherman, this is what I've made up. Um, so the wet form and making a two-piece former um, and then you press it together but it, it will emboss the stitch lines as well um, that's another little one I've been working on um, just for a small knife um, again logos embossed in there but it's quite you know it's 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 quite a useful tool for things like that um, and no doubt there'll be other uses down the line So that's that all bolted together, um, all drilled bolt together. I've used nylock nuts on the back, which will just give me that little bit of um, adjustment if I need to. I mean, it, it, the minute it's, it moves to the top, it's fairly snug, especially at the top there. But I'll leave it for the minute because the time I get grease on it, um, and it's also gonna have the weight of this bottom arm on there and the springs, it's gonna have 20 ton pushing it up so it's gonna be fine. Um, these ends are a little bit uneven, um, but they can come off later. The whole carriage can come off. I can bolt it back together and just true them up. Um, 
it doesn't need done, but just to, to look right. Um, so that's that part finished. So I'm going to call it a day there. Um, I'm pleased to get that bit done. I thought it was going to be a little bit tricky to get a nice sort of smooth slide on it, but it's turned out not too bad at all. Uh, it's going to be nice and solid. Definitely better than the Mark 1 version of the press I did. Um, because on that one, this was over that sort of distance. So there's more chance of play. With this, there's going to be no play. Um, but it's still going to slide smooth. Um, can't do any more today. I was going to cut the parts for the jaws and this plate, but just chipped the tooth off the job saw blade, so that's uh, scuppered that one. I've got one on order. It'll be here tomorrow, hopefully, so I can carry on. Um, only working it evenings on this this week because I've actually got a day job to do. Need to make some money as well. Um, but by the end of the week, I think we'll have this. I'll have one more video. And it'll be working. It's uh, it'll be running, and then after that, it's really paint. And it, I'm also gonna uh, make a, a purpose-made bench for it and to bolt to, um, and probably a foot pedal, so it will operate with a foot pedal lift and and press. Uh, uh, sorry, rise and fall with the foot pedal. Okay, cheers, guys.